next speaker is uh, Stacy Fergal. Uh, she's with the USGS Lake Ontario <laughs> Biological Station. <laughs> 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 and she will be speaking t today on uh, lake trout stocking in Lake Ontario. So, oh, hi, everyone. Um, sorry about the uh, somewhat misleading title in the program that I uh, faded you in with. Uh, as I was working on the presentation, uh, the theme shifted a little bit, but uh, still on point with uh, lake trout and uh, lake trout stocking and spawning in Lake Ontario. Um, so I'm going to be presenting uh, some results on two different studies uh, that we uh, conducted on two different life stages of lake trout. First, I'm gonna go ahead and thank and acknowledge all of my partners. Um, as you know, uh, this would not have been possible without uh, the power of collaboration. Thank you. Lake Ontario is a very big place to be working in. So, um, just some uh, quick background uh, so as, uh, to go over the catalyst for uh, these two projects. Um, in case you've missed all of the uh, lake trouty talks that have been going on all day long, uh, lake trout uh, were extirpated from Lake Ontario, completely wiped out in the 1950s. Um, current restoration efforts uh, began um, in the 1970s and those included um, stocking, marking, so marking them with adipose fin clips and coated wire tags, which are super useful for fish biologists like me, um, sea lamprey control, and um, assessment of those um, programs. So goals of restoration include uh, restoring lake trout as a top deep water predator and obtaining a self-sustaining population, which requires the fish that we're stocking to successfully reproduce. All right, so taking a step back and considering the big picture, we stock a lot of fish. We've been doing this for decades now at this point. Um, we want to consider um, when we're stocking them, do they stick around? Where are they going? Um, can we figure out where they're going? Are they dying instantly when we're putting them in certain study areas? And do they come back to those stocking locations as adults during spawning time? Kind of some lofty goals. Um, so our two studies investigating these questions at two different life stages. Uh, the first study um, was part of my master's thesis work, used acoustic telemetry. So I, I tagged um, hatchery age one hatchery fish uh, with acoustic tags and tracked them around the eastern basin. And then the second study, we used coded wire tag data um, extracted from tags taken from adult fish during spawning time that we collected in gill nets. So, study number one. Here we go. Um, like a few of the previous studies, uh, tagging our fish, um, collecting data on receivers throughout the lake. So, this was my study site. Um, you know, we had uh, an impressive amount of receivers set up around um, Stony Island. So, here is Stony Island. And uh, this island is significant because uh, Dr. Barston, who just presented, had done uh, a whole bunch of research um, <coughs> decades ago um, on lake trout spawning. And this is Stony Island Reef here on the eastern tip. So we know that this is a historically important reef. There was documented natural reproduction here at one time. And uh, this has been a long-term stocking location where the state has been putting these stock age one fish. So this was my array. However, with the power of everyone else's funding, I was able to ping uh, receivers in the entire Eastern Basin, which uh, made my study go from like, kind of interesting, see fish moving around, to like really, really powerful. Um, so I won't go into the nitty gritty, but uh, you can see here's my array and then everyone else. Um, so interesting here, this is uh, kind of at the, uh, the gate of the Eastern Basin. Everything out here is kind of the Wild West. Once they leave that zone, I don't know where they went. All right, so we went to the uh, Dwight D. National, uh, uh, the Dwight D. Eisenhower National Fish Hatchery in Vermont, uh, selected 38 of the biggest uh, hatchery raised fish we could find, uh, performed surgeries, implanted them with uh, Vemco V9 tags. 
that were um, estimated to last about 400 days. So uh, that was selected uh, kind of based on size of the fish. After the surgeries were complete, they were uh, quarantined in the hatchery for 14 days. During that time period, we had no mortalities and the fish were noted by the hatchery staff to have been eating normally compared to the other um, untagged fish there. So then in May of 2017, I followed my study subjects out onto the lake as they were deposited directly above my array. So we were hoping, along with all of the other fish that were being stocked at that location, so we didn't have a truck for 38 fish. <laughs> so um, the, the hope was that we would get at least a single detection on all of our tagged fish. We achieved it. So I was able to get detections on every single one of my fish. Um, so one of the, the first uh, study questions we had was to determine the res re residency time in the array post-stocking. So how long did the fish stick around in that array, which was the stocking location, after we put them in? So on average, 48 days. Some uh, close to 150, others were there for two days and then booked it. That matches up pretty perfectly with uh, after two months in, uh, sorry, excuse me, 41 days in, uh, we had this first incursion of warm water, which was the driver, you know, lake trout don't like warm water, so the second thing started to get too hot, that pushed most everybody out of the area. Uh, so here on the, um, in the bottom figure, uh, this is just considering my small array, um, and this is considering the entire um, GLaDOS network of arrays. Uh, but what I just wanted to um, convey here was that after that incursion of warm water was when we had the, um, the greatest rate of departure from the array. So identifying trends in movement out of the array. So this figure is showing you where um, fish were last detected. So 39% of these fish were last detected heading, heading out into the briny deep, mysterious portion of the lake. 32% last detected around the array. 16% um, here in the central location and 13% in the Canadian Eastern Basin side. And then because this is a telemetry presentation, uh, honing in on a, a few uh, kind of identified uh, fish behaviors, um, so here is an individual, one individual fish. This guy was only detected in the Stony Island stocking array for the entire time. So here are just the different array abbreviations. This is time and pretty boring fish. This fish, however, was all over the place. Lots of movement, you know, sometimes we perceive lake trout as these sexile bumps that are just kind of hanging out above. Um, this shows that they aren't. So he moved all over, in and out of the main lake basin. And um, here, uh, this is how we identified um, mortalities. So see here, we kind of have, eventually, uh, you'll get a flat line on just one receiver for a really long time, and we assume that that fish And um, this fish uh, was likely eaten by a predatory uh, fish as uh, it was in our array for a while and then uh, very, very rapidly around here, it uh, booked it across the eastern basin and then hung out uh, near shore um, on the Canadian eastern basin side. We think maybe it wound up in the belly of a walleye. All right, um, stepping back to our big picture questions again, um, do these fish stick around? Yes, they actually do for a, a decent period of time, about 48 days. Um, where do they go um, when they leave? Well, uh, the ones that weren't in the Eastern Basin headed out into the main lake and we don't know after that. Uh, temperature seems like the, uh, the main driver here. And then uh, when we considered mortality, which I didn't get into too much, but um, when we broke it down, this study estimated
estimated mortality at about 45% of our sample size, and uh, other studies estimated between 37 and 40%. So right on par with what we expected. Okay, our second study, it was uh, investigating adult lake trout. So these are uh, stocked fish that have been put into the lake as those age ones, uh, live long enough to come back, hopefully to spawn, and this uh, took place all on the southern shore of Lake Ontario. So uh, we collected them with gill nets, bottom set gill nets, uh, set overnight in three locations. Up here in the eastern basin, um, by Stony Island, which I just discussed, uh, Glue and Charity, which are all um, identified as historically important lake trout spawning shoals. We had two sites over here in Oswego. Uh, this is where our office is. So <laughs> easy to get to, uh, Ford Shoal and then uh, Nine Mile Point. And then uh, just one site off the Niagara Barn. And uh, in current times, this is where we're actually seeing, uh, detecting all of our juvenile uh, natural recruits. So this is a very interesting area right now. So as I mentioned, bottom set gill nets, um, set overnight, pull them on board, sacrifice all the fish to science. Uh, wand them with a handheld metal detector to look for coated wire tags. They're implanted at the hatchery, smelt down the snoots, uh, read those tags, and then we can extract a whole bunch of information. I was uh, just interested in stocking location for this. And here, um, so these are our capture locations. This is where we set our gill nets. So Charity, uh, <coughs> Eastern Basin Site, Galoo is an Eastern Basin Site, Stony Island is an Eastern Basin Site. Over here, these are where they were stocked when they were put into the lake as, um, uh, from the hatchery. So uh, there's kind of a lot going on here, but what I want you to see is Stony Island, majority of this blue color, Stony Island. So these are a majority of, the overwhelming majority of the fish that were stocked at Stony Island originated as fish that were stocked at Stony Island. And the same general trend holds true with all of our site locations, plus or minus a stocking location um, in either direction. So sometimes in the case of Youngstown, this is our Niagara Bar site. We uh, no longer actually stock directly off from the bar, but we do stock very close in Olcott, New York, and overwhelmingly uh, those fish were originated from that next hill to stock in the western basin. So that's really cool. Uh, big picture here. Uh, we put them there when they're little, and yeah, they come back when they're big. So um, that's uh, very, uh, very interesting information uh, because we can use that right now in Lake Ontario. Like I said, we don't have any natural reproduction. There's some ongoing research right now that's saying maybe that's because spawning habitat is an issue. So with these studies, uh, if we were able to identify viable spawning habitat, we could possibly stock fish there, and then hopefully they would return there to be able to successfully spawn as adults. And with that, I will take any questions. <laughs>